Hey guys, welcome to another very exciting Blender Cookie tutorial. My name is Richard van der Oost and in this part 3 of the Cell Fracture series I will uh, show you how to simulate your fluid. In the part 1 and 2 we learned how to set up the shards and uh, simulate them as rigid bodies. And now it's all about fluid simulation. And the reason I did the rigid body simulation and the fluid simulation separately is because Blender is not able to uh, simulate rigid body and fluid at the same time. So, in other words, the rigid bodies cannot react to the fluid. So, that's why I first baked the rigid body motion, the shard motion, and now uh, we are gonna simulate the fluid, and the fluid is able to react to the rigid bodies. Um, if we set them up as obstacles. So that's what we're gonna do. Enjoy! So I'm gonna start with the same file we ended with in part 2. Exactly the same, we have the motion of the shards until frame 250. <clears throat> so, um, let's just start with adding a fluid domain. Always, if you want to do a fluid simulation, you have to specify a domain. And that is uh, the best thing to use for domain is just a cube. And in this domain, the fluid simulation will take place. So the fluid cannot uh, go outside of this cube. Um, so you want to uh, scale this up quite a bit. Okay, and move it slightly uh, forward in the X direction because probably the splash is gonna go in that direction. So, something like this will work for this tutorial. Uh, you may want to make it a bit bigger if you want to uh, show more fluid uh, further away from the cup, but for this purpose, it's fine. If you make it too big, your uh, fluid will be less accurate. Um, so you have to increase the resolution and that will take more uh, baking time, more memory. So for this tutorial, I think this is the this is about right. Um, and when we simulate this fluid, uh, the domain becomes the fluid. So I will call this coffee because this is the object that will become the actual coffee. Okay. Now we can go into the physics panel and actually make this a fluid domain okay and here we have to specify some settings the first thing I do is the real world size so uh, this is the length of the longest part of your domain in this case the X size and you have to set the proper scale for this so uh, currently it's half a meter and I think we need to set it to like 25 centimeters, so 0.25. And this in relation to the cup will be the proper scale so everything uh, looks right and like properties like fluid tension, surface tension, that kind of stuff will all be properly scaled. Okay, and now um, we have to do another a sort of scaling and this is time scale uh, over here every fluid simulation starts at frame 0 until your end frame so in my case from 0 to 250 so 4 seconds of fluid motion will be simulated during these 250 frames so you can specify exactly how you want the fluid to be appearing and if you want to do it real-time speed you should set this to the end um, time to something like 10 seconds because 24 frames per second then this point will be 10 seconds so something like 10 and a half seconds is uh, the right scale but in our case um, we are doing a slow motion animation so we can see 
there's not 10 seconds happening from this point till here I think not even one second passes so I'm gonna start setting it at point 5 and then use a method to uh, really scale this to the right end time by using the previous simulation we did of the shards so I'm gonna s go quickly to layer 2 and front view and then pick one of the shards and I think this shard will be the right one you can pick any shard that moves up and down so let's hide everything else with shift H and then find the highest point of that shard and I think it's somewhere around 125 so we are gonna use this shard motion uh, the speed actually that it's falling down so the gravity acceleration we're gonna use this to uh, scale our fluid So I'm going to go back to uh, my fluid domain and let's move it to layer 6 to keep things nice and separated. Okay, so here I have my fluid domain and let's uh, hide all those other layers. Okay, so um, now I can uh, add actual fluid and then make it fall down and look if the speed is the same if you neglect uh, the air drag every object uh, falls down at the same speed because we have the gravity of 9.8 uh, meters per square second so if I now um, add a simple object that will be the initial fluid state and move it along move it next to my shard like so I'm gonna set this to fluid type fluid and that will use the volume of the mesh to create an initial fluid drop and then select the domain and simply press bake and this will create a folder in the same uh, place as your blend file and you can specify this if you want to use another folder and the folder is called cache fluid and inside that folder there will be fluid uh, simulation data that's used by blender to read out the fluid but that's all fine so I'm gonna keep this at the default and just press uh, select the domain and press bake and you can see it goes really fast and this is what we have so as I said the simulation starts at zero so it doesn't line up with my shard and to line this up you can after your baking you can set an offset and in this case we have to set it to minus 125 and now my fluid lines up and the resolution is really low that's because the viewport display is set to preview which is 45 at the moment and our final resolution is 65 so um, we can increase the resolution in the viewport by sending this to final and we'll slightly increase the resolution and it's enough to see that this drop is falling too fast so the time from 0 to 250 is too much still so let's set it to 0.4 and bake again and I can just leave this at minus 125 it will only affect how it reads those cache files it doesn't affect anything uh, about when the simulation happens because it's still simulated from 0 and then when it reads those files it just read starts reading from frame 1 25 so let's press bake and it's done and we can see it 
I think this is nearly perfect so yeah let's just use this end time by the way I didn't tell anything about the start time but that's just say you have this fluid and you want to start simulating when it already hits the ground you can set it to like 0.2 seconds or something and then it starts um, simulating later in time for most cases you can just leave this at zero and you will be fine but I think the timing is right now and you always want to set the timing after you set the uh, real world size because if I now change this um, the falling speed also changes so that's something you, you want to note first set this size and then take care about the timing okay but the timing is right now so let's remove this uh, object we don't need it anymore and let's unhide every shard and now I want to set an initial fluid shape <laughs> so it, the initial coffee state will be just resting in this cup so to use um, a nice boundary for that I will just um, use my original cup tap into edit mode and then I will select an edge loop over here like this and press control plus to increase the selection and then I think this is the right height for our coffee so let's uh, duplicate this selection and press P to separate the selection now we have an extra object let's move it to layer 7 and there we have our object I'm gonna call it initial coffee okay and uh, we have to we're gonna use this as a fluid object and set it to fluid and we're gonna use the volume but right now it, it's not a closed volume so I'm gonna quickly close this selecting this edge loop and extrude scale and it's scaling down to the 3d cursor I want to uh, press comma and scale it down to the center uh, just a few times and one last time and then press alt m to merge at center and I'm gonna check the normals and right now they are pointing inwards so I'm gonna press ctrl n to make them consistently pointing outwards and this will prevent any problems with the volume okay this is set up now I will I want to use every shard as an obstacle and we can just select one shard press fluid and set it to obstacle and I want to set this to free slip because I noticed that if I set all those uh, almost 200 shards to uh, a slip type then probably the simulation becomes too complicated for Blender and it just stops simulating after three frames or something um, without any error messages but um, when I set it to free slip it did work so that's okay it's just uh, the fluid doesn't really stick to the particles now because uh, if you set this to partial slip or no slip then the fluid cannot slide uh, as easily over the surface so set it to free slip that will be fine then press shift G and select the complete group and I'm going to deselect some of those uh, shards to uh, make the simulation a bit uh, easier for Blender because they, these particles are not really touching any fluid so 
Okay, with having them all selected, uh, you can see uh, the fluid obstacle property is like a modifier. So I can use this to um, give them all the same modifier. So with my initial shard active, I can press Control L and make links between modifiers. And now uh, every shard will have this uh, modifier and it will be an obstacle and of course the bullet has to be an obstacle as well so select fluid uh, obstacle and this will make the bullet an obstacle too let's see what happens uh, when I bake this so I want to set my offset back to zero and it's still reading that old um, fluid data but that's okay let's press bake with this uh, default resolution and we can see it is very ugly uh, I have the viewport display at final so this is a resolution of 65 but it is really low res and ugly so this is not what we want let's quit it um, and crank up the resolution to 200 and just press bake again see what happens now it takes a while and it goes back to the original shape of our domain and while the simulation is running you can scrub to the timeline and see what frames are simulated and the frames that are not simulated um, the cube the domain appears as a cube and this is much better I'm having some problems with the simulation, I don't know what it is, so just trying to set the bullet to free slip as well. Maybe that will solve some things. Try to change the resolution maybe that will solve things okay cranking the resolution up from uh, 200 to 250 seemed to resolve those problems I think it's just a bug that uh, the fluid simulation stops working at some times I'm not sure but um, it seems to work now so and we can scrub to the time and it looks pretty good so let's quit the simulation and I want to do some additional things in the fluid boundary panel we can uh, set some other settings and I want to set the subdivisions to 2 because that's the minimal amount of subdivisions you need if you want to generate particles and I want to generate some particles which um, allows you to have those nice uh, little droplets flying around and I want to set this really low because 0 .0 0 0.01 and if we look at the description it says one is normal but I think in this particular case if you set it to one you have way too many droplets um, especially if you set the resolution to something like 400 what I'm gonna use as my final baking resolution uh, so 0 0.01 is more than enough uh, little droplets subdivisions is two and I want to smooth my surface a little more so set this to 2 and that will just smooth those 
jagged edges a little more so uh, I think we are ready to bake if you're doing your baking for the first time you want to test some lower resolutions first to check the motion if the motion is all right you can proceed and go to your final resolution and in my case this is 400 which is pretty high but um, yeah I think uh, you just need a, a high resolution for this kind of simulation because then uh, the fluid looks more natural so um, Oh, one, one final thing before I will simulate um, the simulation starts at zero which in this case nothing actually happens until frame 18 so I would like to start my simulation at say frame 15 to save some simulation frames so in order to do that we can instead of starting the simulation at 15 which is not possible we can move everything back 15 frames so select everything um, you make sure everything that is moving you select it and I don't that's not actually necessary just go to the animation window layout and use the dope sheet select every keyframe and move it back with G and then minus 15 And now, um, the at frame one, we are already here, and then the, the simulation starts here, and then the bullet, and the, the fluid has some frames to settle down in the cup, and then it's already being hit by the bullet. Um, yeah, that's everything you needed to know, I think. Let's set the preview to 100. Preview is really useful if we have a very complex mesh. You cannot uh, scrub through the timeline that quickly. So to have a decent preview uh, fluid, it's very useful to uh, set up the animation and check the timing of everything. So preview 100, and then we are good to go. So press bake. and it will take a while and it starts let's go back to the first frame frame zero even okay we have our first baked frame which is really high res and it doesn't stick out anywhere so that's cool and just let it run and this probably needs uh, 10 to 20 hours of baking because currently Blender cannot use multi-threading uh, baking so you can see we only have one of my eight possible threads uh, which is occupied for 100% so that's a bit disappointing but um, yeah maybe in the future it will, it will get updated to support uh, more than one threads and you can also see in the memory I'm using 6.7 gigabytes and let's look at the blender process blender process um, I'm using um, blender uses 5 gigabytes of memory currently which is uh, a lot more than what it says over here so you shouldn't always trust this number um, so for doing um, maybe even when when the fluid is being splashed around uh, it will get higher so um, you want to make sure if you do kind of the same simulation as I do you need at least 8 gigabytes of memory so I'm going to pause this video and see you when the simulation is done. Okay, the simulation is done as you can see. And it is really slow, but it looks great. Uh, very spectacular. I don't think it's really very realistic, but it definitely looks interesting. 
and you can see all those tiny drops that's the result of our level 2 subdivision in combination with the generate particles so that's uh, very cool and it's so slow I'm gonna set it to preview okay uh, it looks very ugly but um, yeah, I can move around quickly and scrub to the timeline and this is the motion we have I think this is successful and it I think it looks a lot like the example video I showed you in part one it's pretty similar and now we have done the simulation we can set the animation back so let's go back to animation in the dope sheet press G15 and then the, sim the simulation lines up to our original again but now the fluid is still moving as we simulate it so let's create an offset of minus 15 and then it, it's not simulated until 15 so there we have it and over here it just shows the original domain because it only starts reading when we are at 15 okay and one last thing to do we can use this fluid as the initial state and it looks a bit ugly but when we go to high res it looks pretty decent um, so you can just duplicate this and right click move it to layer 1 then go to layer 1 and apply the fluid modifier because fluid is also um, a modifier basically so apply it and now we have this fluid mesh uh, to use before the bullet hits the cup and then on layer 2 we have the shards on layer 6 we have the fluid and we can set the shading to smooth and that looks a lot better and I think I covered everything I wanted to cover um, I think in the next part we will cover some basic shading lighting and rendering and also some compositing to make um, to create a nice transition from the original cup to the shards to break it nicely and yeah I hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, if you have questions feel free to ask them and um, if you watch this video on YouTube I recommend you go into the description go to blender cookie and ask your questions there because then you have a higher chance uh, they will be answered by any of the members or by me so uh, thanks for watching and until next time.